Hello and welcome to Week in Review with me, Jane Secker, Kevin Maguire and Andrew Pearce are here to look back at the biggest stories of the last seven days. Uh, Andrew, what was your top story? Those wretched judges trying to subvert the will of the British people. We know with their game it won't work. Kevin? Just mad, isn't he? It's, no, it's the sovereignty of Parliament being upheld. I thought you wanted that. Well, uh, a lot more on that because that is our top story of the week. The decision by the High Court to force Theresa May to allow MPs a vote on the triggering of Article 50, the process by which the UK will leave the EU. Here's our political editor, Faisal Islam. Two ancient institutions, the judiciary and parliament, one very modern conundrum. Who decides to enact the referendum verdict to leave the European Union? The answer from the High Court? Not the Prime Minister blowing open the government's Brexit plans and timetable. It was a thumping legal victory for a challenge principally brought by financier and philanthropist Gina Miller. The result today is about all of us. It's not about me or my team. It's about our United Kingdom and all our futures. It's not about how anyone voted. Every one of us voted for the best country and the best future. The defendant in the case was Brexit Secretary David Davis, who vowed to appeal. The result of the referendum must be respected. Parliament voted by six to one to give the decision to the people. No ifs or buts. And that's why we are appealing this to uh, get on with delivering the best deal for Britain. That's the best deal for growth, the best deal for investment, the best deal for jobs. Uh, the people want us to get on with it, and that's what we intend to do. It's all set for early December in what will be the mother of all constitutional battles at the Supreme Court, with a final verdict in the new year. Uh, Andrew, you're very exercised about this, but, but isn't this democracy in action? Shouldn't MPs have a say? I would have, if I was the Prime Minister, I wouldn't appeal it. I wouldn't go to the Supreme Court at all. I would table a one-line bill in, in Parliament next week, a vote to say that I, the government is to trigger Article 50. Of course, old lefties like Maguire would, would table amendments, but just let, let Parliament do it. It should be nothing to do with unelected, unaccountable judges. Remember, a document was put through all our doors by the government. It cost £9 million, and it said about the referendum. It said very clearly in that document, this is your decision. The government will implement whatever the people decide. Those judges weren't listening. I mean, isn't that the point, Kevin, that the, that the people of the UK have voted? They voted very clearly to leave the EU. It's up to the government to do it. Why should there be another stall? Yeah, they have. And the people have set the principle, we're leaving, we're going. I was a Remainer, we're going out of the European of Union. Are. People voted for that in a referendum. But you, ridiculous attacking judges. This is about the law and it's about the sovereignty of Parliament, something you were supposed to support. And instead of having Theresa May and a few advisers in a back room deciding the timing and terms of our departure, it will be MPs in Parliament with a public debate who will set that timetable and the deal. Be and why, what are you afraid of? Why are you because, so frightened of democracy? Why like are you calamity, so frightened? People like Calamity Clegg, the Lib Dem leader, with his 113 or 115 uh. peers in the House of Lords, they will disrupt this. They will do. Uh, there would be no problem in the Commons. It will sail through the Commons. But the House of Lords is unelected, unaccountable, and they, those lot should be careful they're not going to be Turkey's very progressive. And, and I'm the one who... <laughs> if if his lot sort the, and the uh. Lords block it... She should call a general election. That is, of course, our top story in a busy news week. Uh, so here are five things that you might have missed. She's a very dishonest person, probably the most dishonest person ever to run for the office of president. And you know, I am sick and tired of the negative, dark, divisive, dangerous vision and behaviour of people who support Donald Trump. Well, the email scandal returned to haunt Hillary Clinton in a week, the full final week of presidential campaigning. Donald Trump edged ahead, according to one poll, but the Democratic candidate struck back, labelling Mr Trump a bully. This time next week, the race will be over and we should know who's headed to the White House. Also this week, after speculation about his future, the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, announced he'd be staying in the role until the summer of 2019. He faced an awkward moment later in the week when he was forced to change his growth forecast and abandon plans to cut the interest rate further. 
The pensions regulator confirmed it was stepping up its investigation into the former BHS boss of Philip Green over the high street chain's collapse. In a story first reported by our city editor Mark Kleinman, the regulator, headed by Leslie Titcomb, said it was yet to receive a credible and comprehensive plan to solve the company's pension black hole. She's obviously run out of uh, patience with him, as the pensioners did uh, and Parliament did a long time ago and has now said the legal processes is working. I will come up with a sum um, and if that's adjudicated as fair, you're going to have to pay. How about this? For a driving lesson, police in China are punishing people who dazzle fellow road users with their headlights in a rather unusual way. They're making them sit in front of a vehicle and stare into the full glaze of the headlights for a minute. What do you think? Is it a bright idea or not? And now for our gaff of the week. Uh, and it was nominated on Twitter this week by Lee Murphy. Thanks for tweeting in. It goes to this awkward moment at PMQs. Well, first of all, can I congratulate the Right Honourable Gentleman on the birth, I understand, of his granddaughter. Uh, and no, I'm sorry, in that case, I'm completely mis... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, can I just say that perhaps one should never trust a former chief whip? <laughs> oh, well, that was classic. How could she have done that? How did she not know or think that well, she didn't know something Patrick like that? Patrick McLaughlin was on the front bench, obviously muttered, who is the chief? Yeah. Who is the chief? Mm. Well, he's the, he's the Tory chairman now. He is chief, the Tory chair. Obviously yeah. muttered something in her ear about um, Corbyn, but wrong. But it was actually the fact that the Labour MP, Conor McGinn, uh, delivered his baby daughter in the sitting room because you know, there wasn't time for the ambulance to get there. It was all over the news. Yeah, is, she that, is she that out of touch? Oh, but stop. is it being out of touch or no. is it that she just doesn't actually sit down and read she's you know, got all a the lot stories in her papers plate. every single she? day? Come on. She's got a lot on her God. plate and she probably thought, I don't need to read that story. Well, wherever, wherever other criticisms you would have of previous Prime Ministers, Cameron, Brown, Blair, Major, Thatcher, they would have known. She's, she's actually a rather leaden, out-of-touch performer, and she gave the game away do you, What do you think? I know you're a bit of a maniac fan, but, but do, do you, how do you think she's performing in PMQs now she's sort of gone to her stride a bit? Uh, I don't think... I think it's not her natural uh, <laughs> forte, actually, <laughs> but I think she's doing OK because she's helped by the fact Jeremy Corbyn is the worst leader of the opposition to ever go to the dispatch box at Prime Minister's questions. He is a disaster. When Tory boy says she's doing OK, you know that's called for terrible. Okay. And don't forget, send us your nominations at Light Leaded using the hashtag WNR. Now, this week, campaigners for people arrested during the Battle of Orgreave reacted angrily after they were denied an inquiry into one of the most notorious events of the miners' strike. Sky's Gerard Tubb has this report. The Battle of Orgreave was a violent clash in 1984 between striking miners and the police. Now, 32 years on, a government decision not to hold a public inquiry was met with fury from Labour MPs. Campaigners were dejected. They claim South Yorkshire police, backed by Margaret Thatcher's government, staged the battle deliberately. In 1984, Orgreave was a coking works. Thousands of striking miners tried to close it with a mass picket. They were beaten back by even greater numbers of police officers and accused of rioting. But trials collapsed over unreliable evidence. Six months ago, South Yorkshire Police was heavily criticised by the Hillsborough inquest verdict. Campaigners believe the football disaster might not have happened in 1989 if Orgreave had been properly investigated. Announcing the decision not to hold an inquiry the Home Secretary disagreed. In this situation, in Orgreave, there were no miscarriages of justice, there were no deaths, it was in there were no convictions. The campaign group, part funded by trade unions, says it will fight on. South Yorkshire Police may yet hand over its files. This is a battle that is not over. Uh, Kevin, 
Do you think there should have been an inquiry or not? Yes, a number of Rudd led the campaign up the garden path in meetings where they thought she was going to um, authorise an inquiry but of some sort. But point was, n- nobody died. Th- right. There were no miscarriages of justice there were because miscarriages nobody... Of... But nobody was charged, nobody... nobody people were, no convictions people were, came through. People were arrested at that time, they were beaten up, they were detained by the police, and the cases collapsed at court. Subsequently, and people often say, why wasn't there an inquiry during the, uh, the Labour era? Yeah, quite. It's because, subsequently, officers who were on duty have come out and have uh, said they were told to be rough with the, uh, with the miners. They've said that they were told what to write in statements, which is fabricating evidence. And we now know South Yorkshire police was out of control from the Hillsborough inquiry. And it may not, or grieve, if or grieve hadn't happened and the police had been held, okay, you cannot say Hillsborough wouldn't have happened, but you can see a pattern of behaviour here where working people were treated with utter contempt and brutality by that police force. 13 what? years of a Labour government, 13 years they did not set up an inquiry into Orgreave. I've just why? explained, it, I've it, just explained it, Kevin, why. It, it, I'm afraid your explanation doesn't wash. No, but, it, actually, it's, but it's as true. Amber it has the advantage of being nobody true. Nobody convicted, nobody sent to prison, nobody died. And this, remember what Orgreave was about. It wasn't a battle. It was one day... In it wasn't a, a day, in a very, several days. It was one day, OK, call it one and a half days, in a long dispute. <laughs> you don't know what you're it talking wasn't about. Ba- it wasn't a battle, and it was about the police trying to help miners go to work. You don't know what you're we talking about We always forget this, because the left don't want to r- report the fact that miners were trying to go to work and they were being stopped by unruly pickets. And these pickets, by the way, had never been balloted on whether they should be on strike, because Arthur Scarco took them into a strike without ever asking, getting a mandate so, from the miners. Some of the cult- it, was, it, was, it was a disgrace, the, the way the police behaved that day, I agree, but it was a disgrace the way some of the miners <laughs> behaved too. Let's lighten the mood. Uh, quick quiz for us now. Uh, can mm. you tell me uh, what these are? Sharenting. Brexit. Oh, yeah. Mic drop. No. And there's more. Dude food. Mm. You both yeah. know? They're nodding. Do you know at home? I do. He uh, doesn't know. He's I just pretending he does. Do. do you know what dude food means? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Week in Review with me, Jane Secker. I'm joined by Kevin Maguire, Associate Editor of The Daily Mirror, and Andrew Pierce, Consultant Editor of The Daily Mail. Now, before the break, we asked, have you ever eaten dude food or uh, dropped a Trumpism? You knew what they were, didn't you? Yes. What are they? They're, what are they? they're the new words. You know what Brexit is. Let's not go there again. Mm. They're the, 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 most, the most used words uh, in the last 20... Last 20 yeah, new, new words, words in yeah, the last yeah. 12, 12 months. The new, new words of the year that I'm making in the dictionary and most of the commonly used words. Yeah. Brexit, we will clearly be using uh, next year and years but after that. But I have to say, I've never heard anybody use the expression dude food. Dude food refers to food that's especially junk food that's aimed at men. So kind of supersized burgers. Oh, so that's what that Maguire sort of eats all the time. Uh, oh, you must know the word very well. Yeah. You must know the expression very well. Do you know what Jomo is? I don't, I don't know, know that, Jomo. No. Joy of missing out. So this is when you say, uh, uh, I can't come to the party, and you sit at home and watch the telly and eat crisps and have a r- thoroughly lovely have time. Have you ever heard anybody use that word? I haven't, but, no. you know, I'm not down with the kids, am I? Sharenting? Uh, Sharenting is people who... Uh, tweet and post on Facebook loads of pictures of the children. Right. Share Aww. their parents. That's quite sweet yeah. until it goes wrong. Trump is an obvious. Nause- nause- Trump is an obvious and that will become a bigger word of course if he wins. Oh yeah. no. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> They're That's the phrases right. that the presidential hopeful has come out with on the campaign trail. <laughs> well this week the football associations of England and Scotland clashed with the sports governing body FIFA over whether players could wear poppies on their kit when the teams play on November the 11th. FIFA banned the emblem but the FA said that they would defy that ruling. Here's what Prime Minister Theresa May had to say. I think, I think the stance that's been taken by FIFA is utterly outrageous. Our football players want to recognise and respect those who have given their lives for our safety and security. I think it is absolutely right that they should be able to do so. I think our football is, it's for our football associations, but I think a clear message is going from this House. We want our players to be able to wear those poppies. And I have to say to FIFA that before they start telling us what to do, they jolly well ought to sort their own house out. Um, Quite mean, right, too. Did, should... Should the England and, and Scotland players be able to wear it? Should FIFA be getting yes. involved? No, I wouldn't put them on, uh, in truth. Uh, not just because of FIFA, although they rule out any political, religious or commercial symbols. And we'd soon complain of the Red Army or the Iranian team with the Revolutionary Guards had symbols we, ob- but is we it objected political? to. Is, it's not political, no, it's no, not religious, exactly. a lot of people say. It's, no, a, it's, a, it's, it's an, an act of remembrance Jane, to, to everybody who died. Jane, there is a clear political side when it is also to raise money for serving soldiers, uh, 
uh, people who've been involved in conflicts in Libya, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, clearly. Now, I, before the poppy police shout at me, and I know we have at this time of year, the, the British mutterween, you know, the, who go around saying you're improperly dressed, I'll wear mine in the week of Remembrance Sunday, always do. England have played on Armistice Day in the past, didn't wear poppies. They played on Armistice Day Eve about 15 years ago, didn't wear poppies. Football has latched onto this to try and clean up its own image. That's what it's about. It's not about remembrance. And sticking it on a shirt of a player who's swearing, cheating, spitting, diving, uh, the crowd will be booing so you think them. Is that really? The yeah, that's not a dignified form of respect. Why don't we just stick to what we've always done? You have a minute's silence before games well, and, they're, and they're impeccably well, behaved those minutes and an appalling response of course from Maguire actually I don't have any time for football or footballers but they are role models they are on an international not scale. Very good ones a lot of the no, time they're often, so how nice actually that they want to wear Hang on, they're told uh, they to wear, want to wear symbols that commemorate and remember let's move on to your choices of top paper stories of the week um, Andrew we're starting with you this week uh, questions over Keith Vaz's appointment to the new justice committee look I'm in despair about this I just don't get it Keith Vaz resigns as chairman of the home affairs select committee because of a conflict of interest so then he thinks He's OK to be on the Justice Select Committee? How come? Isn't it the same conflict of interest? Of course it is. There's still a parliamentary investigation ongoing into his conduct, well, the, and the police there is may still yet a police mount I mean, sh an investigation. Should somebody who's the subject of a police no. investigation be no. standing on a... But the no, Tories, of not. the Tories mad madly voted him on. They've gone why mad. Why did they do this? 159 Tories, including seven cabinet ministers. They were and they, they why? Yeah, and they say it's because if you begin objecting to members of select committees, other parties might do that to you. They should have abstained if that is how they should felt. Have they shouldn't have no. he, he is on with Tory sport. But no, if you're under investigation by the police, you should not be going on. But he has this incredible brass neck. Uh, OK, somebody else who uh, also apparently has a bit of brass neck... Uh, Heseltine, Michael Heseltine, a bit of a shaggy dog story involving him, Kevin. He may, he, His dog didn't have a brass neck. No, he, ap he appeared to suggest he'd strangled no, it his, his, mother's, his mother's Alsatian dog because it was threatening his, uh, his pregnant wife, Kim. Yeah, that's the, the, the dog, dog, not, not the wife. wife. Uh, he's <laughs> backtracked on this and he now just says he subdued it as he turned the collar and then later had it put down. But he's got a lot of blood on his hands because we now find out he's killed 350 squirrels that were uh, running around these trees but Gee. it is you know we thought of him as tarzan i mean he just Look, this, is out man, of control. this is the man this is the man who tried to assassinate mrs thatcher no wonder he tried to kill off that dog i don't and he's his attempts to weasel out of it aren't that was a, that was a we know what he, he saw <laughs> off that dog one of my favorite things of the week came from gary conway this week who said having voted keith vaz to the justice committee tory mps uh are appointing michael heseltine judge of next year's westminster dog show Very Very good yeah. Uh, yeah yeah like that yeah. Um, now, what about the stadium? Uh, Andrew, this is you. This is the cost of converting the Olympic Stadium. It's been called into question. Uh, this was at Sky News uh, revealed this earlier Good in the scoop. week. Yeah, mm. because the cost has soared by £50 million. That's a lot of money. Uh, it will be public money. Uh, David Edmonds, who was in charge of legacy uh, post the Olympic Games, has quit. Uh, there's big questions here because Boris Johnson was the Mayor of London at the time when the deal was done with West Ham. We have to ask Baroness Brady, who's associated with West Ham, isn't she on the board, what she knows about this. And I don't think the taxpayer... They did a very good deal, didn't they? Yeah, but the taxpayer shouldn't pick up a single penny for this because football clubs are awash with money. If it's 50 million more, West Ham should just the, sell a player. The, the deal when West Ham pay two and a half million a year and they paid 15 million towards the conversion cost of a stadium that now, in total, is going to about be about three quarters of a billion, smacks of a, 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 a wealth fair deal between a Tory mayor at the time, Boris Johnson, and West Ham's two Tory donating owners and Karen Brady, who's a Tory peer. The, this deal, no wonder Sadiq Khan, the, the new mayor of London, mm. called it in. It stinks. It's also lousy to watch football. I've seen it. And they've got huge problems with crowd control and uh, mm. fans attacking others. I saw it with Sunderland. Fact, it, it, it's, it's happened with Bournemouth. It's happened with Watford. It's, it's happened with Chelsea. Thing, it, it's not Middlesbrough. I don't know about football, but it's not a football stadium. It's an athletic stadium, and they should have found another use for it, frankly. Mm. Okay. Uh, now, Kevin, uh, your final paper story. Uh, this is Adele, a admission from the singer uh, this week about postnatal depression. I, know, I thought it was incredibly brave of her because it is a, still a taboo subject in, in, at, at large. And she, lo she loves her uh, son, Angelo, but she says after he was born, she kind of felt her life was over. And some women do because your body is going through all sorts of uh, you know, chemical hormonal changes. 
you'll be sleep deprived uh, and you'll be in trouble. And I just thought her talking about it and how she uh, was coming through it will help a lot of other, other women because there is a lot of pressure to conform and you say the baby's the greatest moment of my life, it's absolutely wonderful. In many ways it is, as, a, as you, know, you can say it as a parent, but it's also a huge strain. I think it's also good, isn't it, Andrew, in terms of talking about depression, because so many people yeah. still think if you're wealthy, if you're successful, yeah. you can't have depression. They, they think she, you've got life is on a, on mm. a plate for you. If, I, I completely agree. Very courageous of her. She's a fantastic singer. We may not hear so much from her, which would be very sad, but um, I hope she gets over it. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's take you up your ups and downs. Thanks for taking us through those papers. Um, Kevin, uh, we're starting with you this week. You are sending up uh, Sir Cliff Richard. He was at the Pride of Britain Awards, wasn't he? He, he was. The Pride, Pride of Britain uh, Awards. It was a very good uh, interview with him uh, on Sky from the red carpet, which I saw well, being recorded. Well, let's hear a clip oh, of it. Right. It's been difficult, but uh, I've known all along that I had enormous support, and so therefore it's been a very helpful thing for me. It's difficult to explain how it felt, but uh, now I feel fantastic and I'm here back doing what I normally do. So if it wasn't for my faith, I don't know how people cope without a faith. I've lent on my faith for two years and it's been, I wouldn't have had it any other way. No, no, it, my faith stayed strong and now it's stronger. You can really see the impact that these allegations have had on him, can't you? Oh, uh, yeah, he looks older. It was a two-year ordeal for him. Uh, uh, but I see uh, some uh, now um, have noticed he wears a hearing aid. Well, he is 76 and Peter Pan uh, can't, go on, uh, the can't go on forever. Said, did he speak but, to you? He didn't, apparently. I didn't. Uh, unlike didn't he couldn't him. have spoken to everybody, yeah. could he? Yeah, yeah, but, didn't speak to my guy, but apparently didn't notice he was there. But unlike you, I don't go around creeping up to oh, people. I'd have been there like a shot. Like 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 Trust me, I'd have been there like a shot. He, Play nicely. But he's, Play he's, nicely. his hearing might be gone, might be going, but he still looks uh, pretty good for 76. He looks fantastic. So we're sending him up. Uh, good week for him. Uh, you're sending down, though, Lewis Smith. The yeah. gymnast who has, has now had, had a ban from the British Gymnastics Association. Yeah, two, two months, uh, an Olympic medalist. It was for, for mocking uh, Muslims and laughing in, uh, you know, in a mock prayer, which was on a video which came, which came out. I'm not so sure about the two-month ban, actually. And gymnast he'd, he'd already missed the... He, he'd already apologised, said he'd, he, was, he spent some time in the Muslim community. He did. Learned his mistakes. He did. And missed all of the celebrations. And, and, and I think all that was quite, uh, quite right, but... Um, you know, gymnasts uh, or British gymnastics got on their high horse and gave them that two month ban. I'm not sure about that, but he was stupid. But their ban might also be related to the fact that on Instagram he'd previously um, put out a photograph of uh, the, the bottom of a gymnast who was 16 at the time. He didn't. He said he didn't know her age, but he put it out. And you know, the, the guy needs to calm down a bit. He was stupid, and he's very young. But what are they doing banning him? Muslim, the Muslim faith can cope with somebody taking the mick. The Christian faith has put up with it for thousands of oh, years. Well, just, watch, just watch Citizen Corn. So not a, good, not a good week for him. So we're sending Lewis Smith down. Uh, but now on to you, Andrew. You are sending up this week I've, Taylor I've, Swift. The, it is eye-watering. So much money mm. she's made in the last year. $170 million. Is it 100, dollars, yeah, $170 and, and million dollars one nobody year. Nobody anywhere near. She's earned three times even what Madonna earns. Mm, twice Madonna as much still, as Del. Yeah. Uh, and, um, she, and it's amazing because if you played a you know, Taylor Swift record, I wouldn't have a clue. What's up? Yes, you would. I wouldn't. I'm, I wouldn't. Danced no. around the living room with you to Taylor Swift before, have I'm you? sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I have, yeah. Is that Taylor Swift? I what? thought it was Shirley Bassett. <laughs> what, what's happened to Tom Huddleston there? Wasn't uh, that the great oh, romance? Oh, that's all, that's all yeah. gone. That was yeah. in a We're sending her up anyway. Which cost him being uh, James Bond. It's, it's all about touring, apparently. All the money's in touring, and she yeah. likes touring yeah. stuff. So, uh, well done her. Uh, you're sending down, though, the new pound coin. It is 12-sided, 12 and um, I don't know what a 12-sided coin is, but it reminds me, of course, because I'm older. Get you, dear. Get you. How do you spell it? Good. D O D E C A. Got it written down. It's um, it's it is <laughs> like for the, a pub quiz. It is, it is mm. like the old Thrupney bit, and of course, vending machines can't cope with it, so everything's going to be changed. Why do they do yeah. this? Come on, you only have paper money. You never have any. It's mm. not going to affect you. I'm worried about supermarket trolleys when you put it in yeah. to get your trolley. Yeah, he's, oh, been yeah. Off his, yeah, yeah. he's been off his trolley for years. Um, Why does he care? So, someone's tweeted this week. Given the value of sterling, isn't it ironic that it's shaped a bit like a 50p? Because that's what it'll be worth <laughs> by next March. <laughs> so. So we're sending it down. The pound coin has gone down. Thank you both very much. Uh, thank you. And do send us your nominations. Uh, if you want to send something up or down, or indeed the gaff of the week, using the hashtag WNR. Well, thank you at home for joining us for our review of the week. We'll be back with much more next week. But for now, it's goodbye from them. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>